Hey guys, what's up here? And if it wasn't very obvious by the beginning, this video is going to be about music. More importantly, I want to talk about modern music, pop culture, how there's no more good music left, my favorite band, philosophy in music, and stuff like that. Okay, probably every single one of you watching this video has at some point in your life said, oh man, I wish there was good music being released today. Older music was just way better. We're not getting anything good made now. Which is actually pretty understandable, it does make sense to look at it that way, but it's not entirely accurate. The reason you feel that way is the exposure problem, and it's way more prevalent in the music industry than you think. The music you hear nowadays on TV, radio, YouTube, sponsored, shoved down your throat, has been drained of all passion and emotion, and its sole purpose is just to generate more revenue. Because it's just... It's painful. It's so auto-tuned, and it's so beat-corrected, and it's so canned and processed and lifeless and I mean you might as well be listening to a fucking piece of wood at that point. Mm. It bothers me. It's insulting to everyone out there who has more talent and less attention. At this point, you know, the popular usage would dictate that that music is good because everybody listens to it. I yeah. think people listen to it because they feel like that's the only choice they have, you know? So I've been just slowly but surely kind of trying to put the message out there. It's like there's other types of music. There's better types of music. There's better musicians. There's better performers, better songwriters, better everything. Instead of this fucking Candyland, Disney, Kid Bop, fucking, God, uh, that's what I call bop. shit music, volume <laughs> 2007. The music quality and complexity has been severely depleting recently. And I have a few ideas as to maybe why. The first one would be our absolute unyielding greed to turn profit from anything. We humans are all inherently curious and scientific. We want to get to the bottom of things. We like to take things and deconstruct them to learn more about them and see how those things influence us. And at the bottom of that deconstruction normalization, we figure out what actually makes us go. We generally run on dopamine and serotonin. Why is that important? It's because we can figure out what exactly triggers our dopamine boost, which makes us feel happy, and then we can abuse that and market it. We can find symptoms of this in all aspects of our lives. Let's say in video games. The most popular video game recently was Fortnite. Why? Now, I'm gonna get a little bit more technical because of video game design is kind of my passion, but you will, you will figure out why. The reason why Fortnite became so popular is its simplification and randomization. What do humans like to do? They like to win. It gives them a dopamine boost. What do they don't like to do? They don't want to lose. That losing part has been proven multiple times with games such as Quake 3, Quake Live, which have an insanely steep learning curve and deters newer players who don't like to lose when they come in. If modern people come in and play a game for two games, they lost two in a row and they feel smashed, they're not gonna play anymore. Which is why games like Fortnite are always gonna be more mainstream and popular than games like Quake, who are technically way better video game design, but they're not gonna be more popular because their target audience is not mainstream. Now, some of you might think, what, are, what do you mean is that? There's a lot of skill in Fortnite. There are skill ceilings and skill curves in every single game. And the one in Fortnite is very well suited and tailored to the mainstream audience. The game at Fortnite uses a mechanic called Bloom, which means when you're shooting your bullets, you're shooting at your marker, it actually shoots randomly within a small circle. Now that randomization immediately means that if, if I'm more skilled than the opponent, he still has a very good chance of beating me. Because all he has to do is target at me, we target at each other, shoot, whichever one gets better random pattern wins. Now, if you beat someone who is inherently better than you, it makes you feel really good and it makes you want to play the game more to thirst for that dopamine kick. But a zap, there's building in the game. There's a lot of skill in mechanically building around yourself. Well, what building essentially does is it takes away all the positioning value. So if a guy has high ground, he has better positioning, he has prepared everything and he catches a guy in the middle of the field, all he has to do is like build tower around him and then he can sit there safely while someone else might pick him off the map and then you can kind of get out. That's also another randomizing part of the, of the game. 
So the trick to appeal to the mainstream audience is to make a game that's kind of fun, it's playable, it has these randomization moments which make which compensate like weaker players to the better ones and better players to the weaker ones, so it crunches the skill ceiling, it crunches it, so the variation is smaller and everyone feels better. Also, you have to blast out with a really good marketing, what Fortnite has done beautifully. Their marketing team is really good. Another aspect of this oversimplification culture, dopamine manipulation culture, is porn, is the rise of porn. Porn industry has grown insanely in the past 40 years. It has got so bad that at this point it's actually deterring real-life relationships. Why would one currently want to be in a relationship and form really human connections? If my ultimate goal is self-satisfaction, why would I go out there and listen to someone else's problems, pretend to care, just so I can rub one out? Right? It's a lot simpler now. If you want to, if you want to like put emails against the robots, the robots are always going to win. But that is, of course, if you're looking short-term hedonistic pleasure, which is not the point of relationships. But because we have gotten so good at actually manipulating our brain, understanding its inner circuits, and getting that dopamine boost, now we have an epidemic of people who are chronic masturbators and they're never gonna form a real-life relationship. And in long term, that can have actually devastating consequences. Now, that was a bit of a tangent to the entire video topic, but I feel like it's a good way to show the point. How we are always looking to oversimplify things, to get to the core and just pick and choose what we want to take out of it. Okay, now we can extract a pattern from this. In video games, you have the super popular Fortnite, and then you have this Undertale, which was incredibly valued. And now Toby Fox has become a legend in the video game industry, and everyone's waiting for a sequel, because the game had in insane quality, and it was created with absolute passion, and people can recognize it. So we get to the point of simplification and just short-term pleasure to do something deeper that actually connects with us, something we think about, and it makes us better. Same with porn. We have porn and then we have relationships, which are way less popular nowadays, but they actually have way better long-term effects. Now, my point is that this is happening in the music industry at the same time. We have songs nowadays that are so simple, but they're, they last like 2 minutes 30 seconds, and they have like 17 hooks in there. Instead of back in the day, we would have hooks only in the chorus. Now you have the hooks in the song everywhere. And it's scientifically proven when you hear something you've heard before, some recognizable melody, your brain does a little bit of a dopamine kick in there. So obviously, if I hear the song 12 times on radio, 17 times in a club, 14 times in a pub, I have no idea what the song is, but I know the melody, it's engraved in my brain, and when I listen to it for real, and I, like, I'll say, hey, who, who is this? This song is kind of good. It's kind of catchy. But that's only because I've, I've, been, I've heard it a million times before. Like, I just realized this video might be a bit longer than I expected to. Hey, bear with me, bear with me. So what is the general solution to this? I don't think we can do a mass reform of the way we, we think of things. But as individuals, you can kind of teach yourself to look a bit deeper and to find something more meaningful. So if you say there's no good music being released today, that is not correct. You're just too lazy to look past the obvious, past the superficial. You have access to all these learning tools, to all these radio stations, to all these YouTube channels who have like 1,000 views, but they might hold a gem of value in there. So we want to value a little bit less the mainstream and value a little bit more our inner feelings and how we actually perceive things. So we got to learn to shut up for a moment and listen to our subconscious. That is a Jungian philosophy from Carl Jung. We're going to talk about it a bit later on. Without silence, there can be no music. Um, what do you mean? Because it's a contrahand, silence and music? It's always that, you know, you don't have the darkness without the light, you know. There are no shadows if you don't have a, a light that will, you know, cast a shadow. Some people, a group of people who asked me what it's like to write music, where does it come from? And I said, well, why don't you all shut up for a little while? Just totally shut up. And now listen. Now I'm gonna tell you about my favorite band and I'm gonna try to make a case as to why they are underrated. By the way, if you have any underrated musicians, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'd love to find new music and read your thoughts a little bit. About a decade ago, I was watching Justin TV, Twitch TV streams, and then I heard this little song, which is the song that I tried to play in the beginning, actually, called Delusion and Dream. And right after that song in the stream, I heard this song called Carnival of Rust. They're both songs by Poets of the Fall. Now, if you've been to my stream, you've probably heard 
about them and probably heard a couple of their songs because I'm, again, trying to do my part. And I got absolutely blown away at how different the music felt. By the way, that song is the reason I got a guitar, okay? And I suck. I just like having the potential that maybe one day I'm gonna learn how to play properly, right? After that initial contact, I did a bunch of research, because I'm, I'm, I'm a person that likes to do my research. I like to dig a bit deeper and see what the hell is going on. While digging a little bit online, I figure out that's a Finnish band called Poets of the Fall that formed in 2003. Now, I didn't know this until later on that I figured it out and pieced it together, but the band Poets of the Fall started existing while working on a Max Payne video game, which is a game I played when I was a kid. And the song used in the video game is called Late Goodbye, and I've heard it in my life, way back when I was a kid, but I couldn't figure it out, I couldn't piece it together. Such a late goodbye, and we keep driving. Mm -hmm. On the asphalt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my lies. So after that, I naturally track down other songs, listen to the other albums. Then as the years go by, they release new albums, more albums, and I was hooked. Okay, the name of the band, Poets of the Fall, has actually double meaning. It can actually mean the season autumn, or it can be literal fall. Also, the logo is a moth with a pen in it, and we never know what might happen to us, actually. We never know where we might die, so we might as well chase that flame. In my opinion, it basically translates to life is suffering, make it meaningful, carpe diem, sort of stuff. Which is a timeless message that was constructed way back when, and it's never been more needed, honestly, thinking about all the depression and nihilism we have today. So I ordered this three days ago, just so I can talk about it, about it on the video. These are vinyls, uh, and this is the one we're gonna talk about today, the Clearview album, which is 2016, and it's really, really good. And the funny thing about this, I've been listening to this for like three years almost, and I'm still figuring out new stuff about the songs that are happening on this album. It's crazy. That is the one I want to talk about today, because I really like the message. And I was reading a lot recently, and it made me think about it, so I re-listened everything with a more meaningful, in a more meaningful manner, and I figured out a bunch of things. Okay, so the brilliance about this album is pretty much everything. The name Clearview talks about a clear new view on your own life, a new perspective, which is also the Jungian part of it. The name is very self-explanatory, and the icon is a knight from chess, which is the most unpredictable and most elegant figure in chess. Now, the album opens up with a song Drama for Life, which is a bit a bit more hectic, and it's about all the, all the things that are happening in our lives. And then after the song's yet progressively more silent and more peaceful. Okay, the next two songs are my two favorite songs of the album, which are The Game and Shadow Play, which are absolutely brilliant. They're like two pieces of the same coin. They both talk about the society and how we act and feel in the society. Now, I was reading about Carl Jung and his philosophies recently, which made me think about this. The more you dig deeper into this, the more philosophy you will find. In my opinion, the song The Game actually talks about us, our ego in the society, more specifically, a Jungian ego and our persona. Persona is the part of our ego that we showcase to the society. If our ego and persona in a Venn diagram are kind of like this, that is really bad. That means all of our movements and actions are very superficial and dictated by the society. And then we have the song Shadow Play, which refers to the Jungian shadow, which is the subconscious part of ourselves, which a lot of us refuse to acknowledge that it exists. The Jungian philosophy was that Subconscious is way more powerful than we give it credit for. In your game philosophy, ego refers to the unique part of ourselves. And the unique part in humans is very, very tiny. It's a fraction of ourselves. Because we are way more similar to each other than we are more unique. And then the shadow, the subconscious, was built up through the evolutionary biology for millions of years. Now, in this interview, Marco refers to something similar to this. Question, uh, one of our fans asked me, is it about um, mental illness? And I said, well, actually, it's about mental health. Mm -hmm. It's about the clarity, you know, I mean, if your mind is very full of thoughts, we all think constantly, all yeah. the time, all yeah. through the day when we're awake. Mm -hmm. And most of the time what we end up doing is messing ourselves up with our thoughts, mm -hmm. you know. And then at some point, uh, when, you, when your mind calms down, if you just let it, you know, if you don't, if you don't like grab onto the thoughts that go on, you just let them go. Mm -hmm. They come and they go, but you don't pay that much attention anymore to that. You start seeing and hearing what's behind there. 
and what's your intuition, your inner wisdom telling you, and then you get this clear view. And, and that's what it's all about. He's the lead singer of Poets of the Fall and my all-time favorite vocalist. Got a lot more beneath us than we give it credit. Now, when I was a kid and I was learning about Greeks and Romans, I thought it was such a stupid thing to make planets into gods. I was like, how did they get to this? Why? Why, why are the planets gods? It made no sense to me. But even our ancestors understood that the subconscious is really strong. It's actually immortal. That is why they deified them. They made them immortal. We had Venus, the goddess of love. We had Ares, the goddess of war, which is Mars. And they understood. We come and go. We, we live for, back in the day, even way less years than now, and we just, we just perish. Our unique part dies. The thing that is immortal is our aggression, our tendency to war. These are chemicals that, that produce love. Those things are immortal. And they have way bigger role in our lives than we think. We, we think in 21st century that we are these transcendent beings that we, understand, that we understand and dictate everything that's happening to us in our lives, but not really. We're just being very delusional. So back in the day, people perfectly understood that aggression and love was way older than us. It existed through hierarchies, through evolution, way before we did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this video is way too long and way longer than, than I planned it originally to be, but it's just fun thing to talk about. I can go on for way more, but in the interest of keeping time, we're just gonna, we're just gonna cut it here. The lesson to be learned here is not to become a persona, a shallow persona of ourselves, understand what is our ego, and that the shadow exists. And we should not vilify the shadow just because it has few bad aspects of it. It's actually a huge part of ourselves. I'll put a bunch of links in the description of some research you can do on this topic. Also, a couple of songs from Poets of the Fall. And you guys tell me all about it. I also forgot to say in the video that Poets of the Fall acoustic versions of their songs are absolutely brilliant. They're one of the rare bands who sound way better live. And I wanted to go to see them live for 10 years almost now. And this April I had the opportunity to see them in Vienna, which blew me away. I lost my voice, they, they, it was just an incredible experience. I really hope this video was interesting to you. I really wanted to talk about something deeper. So if it was, give it a like, share it with your friends. Thank you all for watching, I'll see you in the next one. You, you.